pop just came in. We're good. We're good. We could even lose somebody. We don't want to. Don't say that, Siobhan. Don't say G. We can't lose anyone. <laughs> Be careful what you wish for. <laughs> All right. So I see a quorum at six o'clock. I am declaring this meeting. Um, I have to start recording. Start recording. That's me. I have to do that, right? Yep. Yes. Okay, starting recording. And Orca's here, but I think it's good for us to maintain. Yeah, just be in the habit, yeah. yeah. All right. I am hereby declaring the March 8th, 2022 regular governing board meeting of CV Fiber to order. Are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Chuck. Yes, I have a new delegate to announce. Okay, we will put that after public comment. Great. We have an action item under contracts update for Mission Broadband uh, contract award. Or does that need executive session? I don't think it will. Okay. Okay. Christopher has his hand up, I think. Uh, Christopher. Um, so in the so potentially two items. Um, number one, in the executive director search update, um, I would like to change that from no action expected to action expected. I'd like to make a motion during that time. Um, and the, the second piece is completely optional. Uh, given our just barely quorum status, I just wanted to you know make sure that if, if we have somebody that may be leaving before that happens, that you know, let we, us know so we, we can get it in. That. Correct. Yep. So um, in addition to that, Christopher, will you need to go into executive session? No. Are you sure? Yes, we're not. Um, we're not discussing any um, any specifics. It just process. Correct. OK. OK, Christopher, if you'll put your hand down, is there anybody else? Any more additions to the changes to the agenda? Uh, seeing none, I will move on to the first thing, which is public comment. Does anybody have any public comment that does not treat on any of the items in the agenda? Anyone going once? OK, we're going to move on to the next item, which is new delegate announcement. Hi, everyone. Uh, I would like to reintroduce Sam Rosenberg. Uh, for those of you who uh, were around kind of this time last year or a little, little bit sooner than that, uh, over the, the first half of the winter of that prior year, um, you know Sam joined many of our calls and was staying uh, on top of CB Viber's doings. Uh, admittedly, at the time, it was probably fairly self-serving because he just wanted to know when he could get internet at his house. Uh, but uh, he is actually my next door neighbor right right, right up the road from me. Um, we both have Starlink now, uh, uh, for better or worse. Um, but uh, in the interest of uh, you know making sure we have active alternates, uh, I approached my select board about having Sam um, added as an alternate for us. Uh, uh, we are continuing to have Karen Horn as a named alternate, um, but she doesn't typically come to these meetings or really know what's what's happening here at CV Fiber. So uh, we wanted to have somebody who would actually stay in the loop and, and on top of the, the goings on and could actually step into a vote if I, I had to miss a meeting. So uh, Sam, welcome. You want to just uh, give a quick hello and, and intro to yourself? Yeah, hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for having me. I think Chuck pretty much said it all there. I, I'm <laughs> I've moved from self-interested to uh, self-interested, but also happy to be helping in any way I can. Uh, so I'm happy to tune into the meetings and make sure I'm on top of everything going forward. Uh, and hopefully Chuck won't ever have to miss meeting, but if he does, I, I can do my best to try to fill at least part of issues. Thank you for Sam, I, I will also call out, um, you know, the your level of involvement is going to be ultimately up to you, but uh, alternates can serve on committees too. Um, so we have five committees of which, uh, you know, you're, you're welcome to contribute more if you feel so inspired to do so. Yeah, perfect. I'll see where the needs are and how I can best help out. Yeah, welcome, Sam. 
Thank you, Sam, and welcome aboard. We'll move on to the next meeting I, I, agenda item. Um, approval of the meeting minutes of the February 8th governing board meeting. So on that, I have got some uh, edits. They're mostly um, minor. Um, so what I would like to do is share the edits that I received from Alan and then uh, run through those and then make the motion that uh, the minutes be approved with the uh, addition of the edits from Alan. Uh, does that make yep, sense? Everyone? OK, so sharing my screen. Um, let me know when everyone can see this. OK, so I'm assuming people keep. OK, so the first <laughs> edit is that Meeting should be singular. Um, I'm oh. not seeing it. Is there, are other people seeing it? I, I yes. can't see it. Oh, there it is now. OK, sorry, just my Internet. All right. It's probably mine. Um, my kids are home and uh, they're trying to be good. <laughs> but anyway, so the first edit is that under meeting and minutes approval, uh, meeting should be uh, plur or singular, not plural. Um, then there are these edits uh, about what the Vermont statute state uh, that it should be uh, well Vermont statute state that once the CUD becomes operable. Um, basically replacing uh, these uh, edits in with the yellow here again, they're, they're mostly just grammatical. They don't really change the meaning. Um, and then uh, getting rid of the A here. And then uh, again, these grammatical changes, some more grammatical changes. Um, and then again, uh, more minor little grammar things that I didn't catch when I was going through them. Um, more grammar is things. It, is it NRD as in dog C or NRT as in Tom C? T. Uh, T. Okay, so you've got an NRDC down there. I just it leapt out and poked me in the eye. Okay, uh, I am under town communication. Uh, uh, let me let me find it. NRDC. There we go. Okay, so I will change that as well. Okay. Um. Yeah, it's NR. Oh, I see it's T there. right there. But yeah. it was NRD somewhere, NRDC. Yeah, down down <laughs> after the should be they down a little further there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I believe that that is that these are the edits. So I'd like to make a uh, motion to approve the February 8, 2022 meeting minutes as drafted with the uh, grammatical corrections uh, suggested by Alan Gilbert. Second. Second. I see the motion made by Jeremy Matt and seconded by Jeremy Hansen. All right, thanks for your patience, everyone. Any, any discussion of that? Any further discussion? Any objection to the approval of this motion? Hearing no objections, I direct the clerk to cast a vote, in, a unanimous vote in favor of the motion. Did I get that right? I think <laughs> you can just right. declare it unanimous because declare we're not. Declare unanimous? That, okay. Yeah. All uh, right. Because Treasurer's not, report. That, that's, that's for like voting for a position, like we're voting okay, for okay. a chair or something. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. All right. Yeah. Ray, is that you? Chair. Yep. Yeah, Madam Chair, Actually, this um, is Alan. I, I just wanted to thank you for paying me by the hour. <laughs> We're going to double it. <laughs> <laughs> just give me your minutes. <laughs> what is it that you needed, Ray? Uh, Madam Chair, I'm filling in for Phil as the treasurer, so as the chair of the finance committee. I'm putting into the um, into the chat room for Jeremy's mm -hmm. pleasure. Uh, the treasurer's report uh, make it easy. So um, basically the 2018-2021 financial compilation report is expected in April. 
We paid $74,000 plus in bills last month, poll inventory, accounting services, and other smaller uh, bits. Um, we have $59,000 pending the executive committee for poll inventory invoices. And of note in the um, in the Treasury report documentation that I passed sent around before, just prior to the meeting, uh, there's a balance of $714,761 in grant funds. And a particular note is that there is $2,426,500 in grant funds available upon our invoice to the Vermont Community Broadband Board. Woohoo. Any discussion or questions? Is that all on the treasurer's report, Ray? It is. All right, so let's go on to the budget amendment, and that is also Mr. Ray. It is. Let me let me find my. Uh, <clears throat> see here. That's that. Go down here. Come over here. So, I sent out a uh, an email regarding the budget adjustment for to the um, to the board, and and this will be. Uh, the motion, the executive committee recommends that the board approve a budget amendment that moves $17,500 from the audit account to the advertising account in recognition that an audit will not be required in 2022 and to address current and future 2022 advertising needs. That's the motion. Second. Second. I did send around a document uh, as well that identified uh, that showed where the impact was uh, for our proposed amendment change number two. Jeremy? Yeah, I was just going to say that for the minutes and for recording, who the second was. The second was a Jeremy Matt. Okay. Motion made by Ray. Sorry, you can continue, Ray. Any Is discussion? discussion? Yeah. I can do this. Any discussion? Any, discussion? Any objections? <laughs> yeah. OK, so hearing no discussion, are there any objections to this motion? Hearing no objections, the motion carries. Right? Right. Sounds good to me. OK. Yep. <laughs> this is the first meeting I've run beginning to end, so you know. I've, I've got You're to get doing my great. Under me. Yeah, you are doing great. <laughs> I wasn't fishing for compliments there. Just <laughs> don't yell at me. OK. <laughs> All right, so the next item up and we are it is 611. This is timestamp 645. I'm awesome is what I am. All right, it's the exec. Uh, no, 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 no. Six thirty-five. Front porch forum. Chuck is up. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully you all saw a motion um, put forth by Ray earlier today. Uh, the purpose of this uh, is ultimately to make it so that we can communicate directly with our communities via front porch forum. Um, when you uh, do the math, it comes down to approximately twenty dollars per post per community. Um, uh, if we leverage the full two posts per month that, that we would receive. Um, the rate that was given here is negotiated down from our normal rate, which is about 12.5. So it's, it's a little savings, but you know, it's, it, it is a savings nonetheless. Um, and, uh, and there is an expectation that next year we would probably be asked to go up to the full rate, but you know, since we're uh, you know, we're, we're starting fresh on this. Uh, they agreed to give us a little bit of a cut so that so we could see the value of it. Um, what this really does for us is it means those monthly updates that that we send out and ask all of the delegates to post a front porch forum on our behalf, uh, we'll be able to just send directly to all of our communities. So if we have community, you know, delegates that haven't been doing it, uh, their their communities will will get that engagement that they haven't been getting um, and. I, I just want to also call out that uh, while we would then take that on for the monthly newsletter updates, 
delegates are still more than welcome to continue posting uh, and plugging CV Fiber and, and, and would be encouraged to do so, providing either clarifications or other updates that are outside uh, of the monthly newsletter or other engagement opportunities. This is an important step because we have to show that we are engaging our communities uh, in order to get the grant funds we are seeking. Um, and so we believe this to be an incredibly important uh, step. Uh, and it is relatively cost, uh, you know, it's relatively affordable, uh, all things considered. If, if you think $20 per community per post, um, it's probably gonna get in front of at least a few hundred eyeballs and in some communities, maybe a few thousand. Um, and so, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll give it a try. We'll see how it works. And we can always uh, revisit if we're, we're not finding value in it next year and, and not go down this path again. So I'm gonna skip all the whereas. Uh, Ray, um, thank you for putting the motion and the whereas in the chat, uh, but I'm gonna skip the whereas. You're more than welcome to read it yourself. I'm gonna jump right into the, the motion. It is hereby moved that the government Governing Board approved an agreement with Front Porch Forum for $10,584 for a 12-month period and that the Executive Committee is authorized to oversee and implement the agreement. I second. Motion made by Chuck Burt, seconded by Linda Gravel. Yes, I think I saw Henry's hand first. <laughs> yes, uh, just curious, um, we are obligated for a full year if we decide we don't want to continue it we don't get any money back that that is correct um and i will point out that this price we got was their price for one post a month which is actually what we're using uh but what the negotiated deal was that we would get their two posts per month uh deal at the one post per month price um so you know right now i'm quite certain like we will continue bargain. to use it at one post per month. Uh, how, however, hopefully in three to four months, there'll be enough activity where we might want to start adding in a, a secondary consideration, uh, particularly in areas where service is uh, hopefully by then in construction. And so, Tom, oh, sorry, just, go ahead, Henry. Um, so uh, that I'm fine with that. Um, so uh, if we starting, if we start to go to two posts or or more, um, do we get charged for that, or we get um, we can do as many posts as we want? We cannot do as many posts as we want. Uh, they limit any organization to no more than two posts per month, uh, yeah. okay. uh, uh, and that they're they're they they seem to be very strict about it. They said they've never even let the state do more than two a month, um, and the state does does subscribe to this custom access program. Okay, thanks. And Tom. I was going to point out, I'm sure many of you who have been on French Porch Forum have noticed that, uh, I'm not sure if it's Comcast or Consolidated has been putting in their own little posts here and there um, and seeing that it, it's a good move for us to be able to get the same people. So I am in favor of this motion. And Linda. Uh, but we still, as individual delegates, can put as many posts in as we wish. So please do so. Um, I'm in favor of this motion. And Walker. I'm in favor as well. I was going to say essentially the same thing. Um, the one thing I've also seen is a ton of underwriting on VPR by uh, Consolidated with their new fiber offering that they're kind of showing saying 50,000 subscribers already, et cetera. I don't know if that's something we've thought about um, as an avenue for community engagement, as what we're calling it, but uh, I don't know. I'm just putting that out there. That's what I've been hearing. And Chuck. Yeah, uh, I, I, I have heard that as well. Um, in my humble opinion, I think we're not quite at a point where we might see as much value out of that. Uh, it's pretty expensive. And I think if we were approaching actually selling subscriptions, it's a great idea and we should certainly revisit it at that point in time. Um, but I, I, I might think, I might contend now it's a little bit premature. I do also just wanna call out that actually, no, you can't post as much as you want on Front Porch Forum. Um, if you do it too much, 
they they will actually put the kibosh on it, although they wouldn't tell me what the number is. But they told me uh, they do keep an eye on that. And when people get too aggressive, they do actually start blocking their posts and uh, uh, asking them to tone it down. <laughs> OK, <clears throat> is there anybody else? Ray, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to note that. Um, <clears throat> let's see, what is that I wanted to note? <laughs> <laughs> I want to note that I'm tired. Um, I, I want to note that this is not the marketing that we're going to be doing for subscriptions. Uh, that we will be working with uh, Waitsfield Telecom in a marketing program that they have. They use a, uh, a program called CrowdFiber. So this is uh, in addition to something that it will be part of our Waitsfield Telecom contract. Good to know. Thank you. That's good. Anybody else have any questions for Chuck? Any other discussion of this motion? We have a motion, right? Yeah, OK. Um, any objections to this motion? Hearing no objections, we find in favor of the motion. And that's one point four. Executive Director Search Update Christopher. Good evening, everyone. Um, so, yeah, I just want to give you um, a bit of an update. Uh, so the CV Fiber Planning and Development Committee built a job description and formed the recruiting work group, um, which included six members of the CV Fiber board. Um, the CV Fiber executive director role was first po uh, posted publicly on January 9th and ultimately was posted on LinkedIn, Indeed, Seven Days, Times Argus, Vermont Professionals of Color Network, and Vermont Job Links. Um, a candidate tracker was then built to thoroughly document every step of the recruiting process, including details uh, of every candidate decision. The initial round, which included all who applied through February 12th of this year, um, included uh, we had 34 candidates apply in that initial round. Um, every candidate application was reviewed uh, by the recruiting work group, work group and uh, the, the candidates were each uh, rated and ranked. Um, and so the, the rating was basically, yes, we would like you know, to further consider them or no, we wouldn't. Uh, a little bit more complex than that, but that's basically it. And then ranked. So each working group member basically uh, you know, ranked um, you know, from one being their highest rated, uh, you know, ranked candidate to you know, 34 being their lowest. Um, <clears throat> And, uh, and I, I should say, we also committed to responding to every single candidate. Uh, so once a candidate is ruled out, they are immediately notified. Um, and so once every candidate was, was rated and ranked um, by the working group, um, there, were, there were seven candidates who clearly rose above the rest. Uh, and email screens were, were sent to each of those candidates. One was ruled out and the remaining six candidates were phone screened by myself. Um, that was just a, a quick 20 minute phone call asking some specific questions. Um, and sorry, I just lost where I was. Here we go. Uh, so, um, so Jerry uh, Diamantides, um, Linda Gravel, David Healy, and myself then held uh, 90 minute interviews which, with each of the remaining top four candidates. Um, those four interviewers, uh, plus Tom Fisher, uh, met on uh, met this past Friday to discuss the results of, of those interviews. Um, and we we all agreed that all four candidates were exceptional. Um, we we really had a, a fantastic pool of candidates to choose from. Um, and after you know a little bit of deliberation, ultimately we you know five of the six working group members who were in attendance um, all agreed on a single top candidate. Um, the sixth working group member, um, you know, Jeremy Matt, uh, was unable to attend for scheduling reasons. And it's totally understandable, um, but I wanted to call that out that Jeremy didn't object to <laughs> to the results or anything. Uh, just wasn't able to attend. Um, and uh, and then finally this week, um, Linda Gravel is performing reference checks on our finalist uh, candidate. So. The uh, I guess b before I go any further, does anybody have any any questions about the recruiting process? 
I love it. It sounds wonderful. Um, you know, I want I, I'm anxious to hear Jeremy Matt's minority report, but you know. <laughs> so Linda, go ahead. I would like to thank Christopher. He's been um, coordinating this whole recruiting process. It, it was a lot of work. He put hours and hours into this. So I want to thank him for all this work he has done. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Jeremy, your hands up. Yeah, I was going to say thanks as well to, to Christopher in particular, but also uh, Linda has been doing a lot of work, you know, calling candidates and references, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and sort of to apologize that I, my schedule um, work wise kind of went off the rails a little bit and been less involved than I would have, would have liked to have been. So. Anyways, um, thanks for all the work that everyone put in on this. Well, I'm going to I'm going to turn that I'm going to turn that back around to everybody, uh, including you, Jeremy. So, you know, Jeremy, you may not have been on the interviews, but we had I'm going to say that again. We had 34 candidates um, and we reviewed every single application. We we seriously considered every resume that we received and most candidates submitted cover letters, which you know we thought was a requirement. but um, we reviewed every single one of those and every all six members of of the recruiting working group were very involved, you know, some a little bit more than others, but it was a lot of work for everybody. So thank you, everybody. Yes, thank you. Does any anybody other? else have any other comments or Christopher, do you have more to say on this? I, I do. I just want I was asking if anybody had any questions about the, the process. So. Um, so originally, the, the original authorization was for the recruiting working group to make a recommendation to the executive committee, and then the executive committee would make a recommendation to the board for final approval. Um, however, as we're, we're not ready to, uh, to recommend the candidate tonight because we have not met with the executive uh, committee yet, um, honoring this plan would result in more than a month. Uh, delay in onboarding a potential executive director um, because while we technically could um, call a special board meeting to approve, uh, you know, before now and or between now and, and April 12th, um, seeing as it's a challenge to get a quorum on the normal board day, I think it would it would be next to impossible to get a, a second meeting um, scheduled with with a quorum, um, and so. Therefore, my, my forthcoming motion is to propose a slight modification to that plan. So I can I can post the motion in the chat if you're ready for it. Yep, go ahead. All right. Don't like the teams can't let you look at the participants and the chat at the same time. OK, <clears throat> so uh, and. Uh, I apologize. Uh, this is my first ever motion on any board, so uh, forgive. You know, if, if this needs to be modified, my feelings will not be hurt. Um, so, I, I move that the governing board authorize the executive committee to approve a candidate recommended by the recruiting working group for the exec for the position of executive director, and authorize the executive committee to negotiate employment of said approved executive director candidate. Second. Moved and seconded by Christopher Schenk and Jeremy Hansen. Can I have discussion, please? Go ahead, Chuck. Um, just a, a, a quick point of order. Um, Chris, can Chris make a motion as an alternate? So I asked Jerry this earlier today because I, I had concerns about that. Um, but if, if that is a concern, um, I believe Linda may be prepared to make the motion. If we want to just make sure everything is copacetic, I'm totally fine with that. If Linda, you are. Uh, Alan, go would, ahead. I would like to make yeah. that motion. If yeah, it's, I, uh, I, I can just clarify if, if uh, Chris wants to do the motion. When, a, when an alternate is assuming the role of delegate because the delegate is not there, the alternate has the same powers as the delegate does. So I, I, it's proper for him for him to make the motion if he'd like, but if well, I don't want to do it. But his primary is primary. 
but yeah, Linda his primary is here, is so here. I, right. I will gladly so make the same motion. Okay, so the and motion was made it. by Linda and seconded by Jeremy Hansen again. All right, any further discussion? Jeremy, whose hand's up? Chuck, your hand is still up. Okay, Jeremy, Matt. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm, I mean, as part of the working group and part of the executive committee, I'm fine with it if other people are. It seems like a lot of authority to be delegated to the executive committee by the board. Um, and I'm, I guess I'm a little bit, I don't know, it, it, it took me by surprise, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah, and I, I, I will apologize for the, you know, sudden kind of springing this on everybody. Um, you know, today we were working through, we were actually, you know, hoping to have a little bit more progress before, uh, before today. Um, and suddenly we started looking at a calendar and started figuring out when the <laughs> candidate. And so, you know, we, if, if we get this passed, then we should be able to onboard a candidate in April. If we don't, we're definitely talking um, early to mid-May, um, yeah, and so I agree. You know, we do need if the board is on, as soon as we can. Yeah, yeah. If, if the board is uncomfortable with this, I completely understand. It is, it, it is unusual. Chuck, your hand is still up. Do you want to talk? Yeah, no. This one is is, is legit. Uh, I guess I share the concern that Jeremy expressed. Um, and, you know, again, I'm also a member of the executive committee. So this is delegating the authority, to, you know, to to a group I am part of. But, I, you know, I really think this is something the broader board should be interested in having, you know, some level of engagement in and 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 and, you know, but that's just my opinion there. Um, uh, I, for one, I think would be slightly more in favor of trying to call a special meeting of the board uh, subsequent to an executive committee uh, check. Okay, Jeremy Hansen. Uh, I guess I'm just wondering when um, when you imagine this executive committee meeting to happen. This would be a special one later in the month after the regular one that's on Thursday. Is that the is that the idea, Christopher? Um, no, we're um, we we should be prepared to make that recommendation this Thursday. Okay, so um, I, I, I guess my comment is that if if folks want to weigh in on this, they could come to the executive committee meeting on Thursday. Um, I mean, it's <clears throat> it's not like, at least in my experience, that that meeting has been terribly exclusionary, um, and so not that folks get a vote necessarily, but if folks want to weigh in and want to see. The candidates, you could certainly show up on Thursday. That's all I got. Ray. Yeah, um, uh, several several points actually. First is um, I, I want to applaud the due diligence that the committee has gone through. You, you guys have done a great job. I think it's important to note. I hope it's captured in the minutes appropriately. Uh, secondly, um, I've been all in favor of moving a great deal of the work that, is that has previously been done by the board to the executive committee so that this organization can be more agile. Okay, and, and now the executive committee is meeting twice a month. And so I think that's important. And I think that we're going to get a lot of things done uh, quickly. Having said that, there are some things that are so important that the board ought to make the decision. And I, I agree with Chuck. Uh, call a special board meeting. We'll get 11 people there and uh, this motion will go through. But um, as I've said for a long time, the process is a solution. There's no shortcuts to the process. And I realize that, you know, we're looking to bring somebody on board as soon as possible. And I'm all in favor of that. Um, and I think we can do, I think we can make those decisions here in March and get that done and get this thing going as, as quickly as possible. So I'm, I'm just speaking about process. Okay, and I, and I do think that you guys have done a great, great, uh, great job uh, bringing this together. Thanks. Alan, you're muted. your turn. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking along the same lines as Jeremy Hansen. <clears throat> But the more I thought about it, and I think particularly after what Ray just said, it might be just as easy 
to schedule a separate special board meeting as it would be to invite as many people who wanted to come to the executive committee meeting and end up in the situation that we therefore have we we all of a sudden have a have a quorum of board members and we haven't called a board meeting so i think if we were trying to conflate the executive committee meeting and the board meeting together we'd ha we'd have to we'd have to warn a special meeting for the same time we warn an executive committee meeting so it it, it gets a little bit confusing i i think it would work but uh, probably what Ray is suggesting is the smoother and easier way to uh, to do this. Maybe a few days longer, but I think I would agree that we really should uh, respect the process in this one as much as possible. This is a big this is a big decision and a uh, an important one that everybody should be involved in. Okay, Tom. I tend to uh, agree, and um, I would say if we could limit that agenda for that special meeting to the single item of, of electing the uh, executive director. I think that would probably help um, make us so people have the time to be able to make it. We can try to reduce how long it takes. I don't know how long we have to review the candidate for it, but um, hopefully not two hours or anything. Um, and then I would just, you know, maybe aside from just sending out the typical invite, make a flag at the top that says, hey, you know, pay attention. This is this is an important one. Uh, I think beyond um, it being something that I think we should, as a group, decide, I think it also sends an important statement to our new executive director that they have the full weight of the board behind this decision. And Jeremy, Matt? I mean, one idea, could we call concurrent board and executive committee meetings at the same time? And just you missed the window. And then you missed the window if you thought it was going to be this Thursday. That's not true. You need uh, 20, for 24 hours. meetings. Oh, you're right, you're right. 24 for a special yeah. meeting. Yeah. Um, so we could call it for just after the executive committee as was suggested in chat by David. Yeah. Anybody want to discuss that? Uh, Alan, go ahead. Well, that's what I was sort of noodling with, and I think it I think it could work. Uh, but you want to remember, if the executive committee, well, let me think about this aloud. The executive committee wants to go into executive session for a discussion. Um, we would have to we would have to allow members who are not part of the executive committee to come in and join us and you have to have a reason for that and i guess we could give a good reason although it's very clear what we're trying to do when you get to that point we're obviously trying to have a full meeting of the board concurrently with a meeting of the executive committee and that's that's what i worry about it just it just gets a little bit messy and it, it seems to me if we can do this and it only takes us four extra days to do it in a more straightforward, proper fashion, I think it's worth it rather than conflating the two. Back here. Um, Alan, Jeremy, did you want to speak again or oh. your hands still uh, well, up? Okay, well, Walker. Yeah. What, what, okay, Jeremy does have actually. It. Jeremy, no, I'm going to stop you. I'm sorry. Walker hasn't spoken yet, okay. so I'm going to let Walker go. I concur with what Alan said. Um, I also think that the executive committee might need some time to really make a decision. I mean, there might be more complexity that comes out of that meeting. And I don't know, but I would like to do it in order and not at the same time. And I think that um, also personally, it's a little hard for me to make time on, on Thursday. It's, it's coming up pretty quickly. I, I can rearrange stuff for the next week, but that's going to, if everybody has to make make room on Thursday, you might not get a quorum. Okay, Henry? I'm trying to envision what difference um, 
having I mean, I understand the process, but I'm trying to in reality, what difference would it make if we had this special meeting for um, all the delegates and we and, you know, people are going to what discuss they're going to try to uh, process uh, your decision and say, why did you make that decision? Or maybe it should be someone else. I mean, what what's the value in having it go th before the whole board, except for the process and the fact that, you know, uh, it was it done in that matter. And it, it seems like it's just going to wind up being the same as letting the executive committee take on the responsibilities. I don't know any thoughts on on what that actual special governing board meeting why, why that would be so much more beneficial than just uh, letting the executive committee take that responsibility. So I'm I'm going to jump in here and and address that particular thing, Henry. That one of the things that was said earlier was just the weight of the board behind it. Our executive director is a very important position. They're going to be setting the tone for an awful lot of the work that's done. And having the whole weight of the board, being able to say, yes, the board voted this person in rather than the executive committee, that kind of, it, it gives more oomph for the person, but it also kind of puts us all on the hook for this decision because we are making this together. We haven't, we're not putting that on any individual. And um, and I'm now going to recognize Jeremy Matt again. And we're doing second rounds now, if anybody's got a second round. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, I'm, I kind of, I, I agree with you with what you said. And also, you know, just wanted to really emphasize the, it, it, it makes it so that no one can come back later and say, well, you didn't go through the right process. You didn't, you know, if, if, if you had recognized, if you had warned it for a board meeting, then I would have showed up. You know, there, there might be someone who wants to weigh in on this, who isn't at the board meeting right now, and who might be upset if that was passed off to the, um, to the executive committee. Um, so, and the other thing is with the idea of having the the special meeting right after the executive committee meeting, that could be a little bit challenging scheduling wise because we don't know exactly when the executive committee meeting ends. I mean, I, I would like it because it makes it easier for me to show up. I'm already on for the executive committee meeting, but I think it would be better to try for like Friday or the following Monday or something along those lines. Okay, yeah, Linda. Uh, would it be possible to schedule what that meeting, the time for that meeting, the special meeting tonight, so that all uh, parties leaving this meeting at least know when we're going to be get together for the special governing board meeting? Before we do that, we should figure out what's going on with the motion. Sorry, point of order. Yeah, that's that's fine. All right, so this motion. Um, right, as David says, we need to reject the motion and then we need a motion to or do we need a motion to request a special meeting or I just need somebody to request a special meeting. The chair or can I can, can I can just schedule it. I can just schedule it. Yeah, right, true. Jeremy. Yep. Yes, I have the power. <laughs> Okay. Jerry didn't know what he was giving up. No, he had no clue. What's hilarious about this is I'm out of town next week. So, <laughs> so I don't know if Jerry's not around. <laughs> Friday's what a good a, day. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, how do we reject a motion? Do we, do I have to have everybody? Well, should I do a vote. voice vote? Roll call. Roll call vote. Okay, roll call or, vote. Or, it is. Somebody can withdraw. Or, or, or Christopher and or Linda oh. can withdraw. I think. Yeah, you can withdraw can, a motion. If she wants to do that. Yep. Christopher, do you want to withdraw the motion? It's Linda's motion. Oh, it's Linda. I'm sorry. You're right. It's Linda's motion. Thank you, Jeremy. I I think there's been enough discussion um, that I should withdraw the motion. Okay. 
Does that need a second to be withdrawn, Jeremy? No. Okay. Not really. No. Okay. The motion has been withdrawn and the floor is open for another no, we're gonna do we're gonna do a special meeting. Um and we'll try to schedule it next week. So special meeting for next week. Does that sound doable to people? And that we will be find out when it works for people or take a straw poll now. So so just note that PDC is Tuesday, Thursday is comms committee. That leaves Wednesday as a possibility. The following week is finance on Tuesday and policy on Thursday. But I, I'd recommend Wednesday the 16th, is it? Yes. Yeah, I think the, the 16th that would give that time. Okay, we'll do the scheduling offline. That I, I've got some guidance. I'll be in contact with Jerry. We'll get something out. Okay, next item on the agenda means I have to open up the agenda again. Where is it? Oh, that's not it. That's it. Where'd you guys go? Okay. Um, contracts update. Is that David or Ray? Uh, both, I think. Okay. So I, th I think there's several things to report on. One is the Mission Broadband Contract Award. So I will be making a motion on that. Um, another one is the right of way permitting services um, uh, action that the executive committee has taken to inform uh, the board. Uh, the W the status of the uh, Waitsfield Telecom and an update on the NRTC uh, contract. David, did you want to speak to any one of those? I mean, I can talk about the NRTC contract if you want. Sure, go ahead and let's start with that. So we're we're proceeding with this very complex multi-part contract with NRTC. We've uh, been working, Jerry and Ray and I have been meeting with them twice a week for two hours to help them finalize the exec, executive <laughs> executable project plan and all the content that needs to go on that. And um, and I'll talk about where we are with the plan later on that item. But that's sort of where we're in the process of um, they're sending us the next tranche of contracts to review attachments C, D, E, and F, I think, maybe even G, <laughs> in which we'll be authorizing when we do approve these, um, a third down, down, down payment on the detailed design. So it's a big chunk of cash, cash, cash that will be going out when we do that. Yeah, so those, those individual exhibits are project management, design, engineering, and construction plant, I think, right? Something like that. So there's a whole group of those in front of us. Uh, with regard to the Waitsfield Telecom contract, uh, as you know, the executive committee has asked uh, Jerry and I to be the front leads on the, those contract negotiations. And uh, we have basically... Uh, pretty much concluded now the standards we're about ready to get into discussion about the fees and I'm hopeful that you know, in the course of this week and next week we can bring that to a closure and bring that to the executive committee and the board the executive committee the last Monday of the month and maybe the board uh, the following um, uh, the following second Tuesday of what is it April already okay uh, the next is the oh so um, under the under our procurement policy that we adopted um, a couple of months ago, one of the options was that if we if we, we wanted to enter into a contract in which the value is between ten thousand and two hundred fifty thousand dollars, we can go into what's called a, a simplified bidding um, process, which allows us to submit a statement of work to two or three to two minimum of two or more. Uh, contractors that we're aware of that have um, expertise in the area that we want to have the contract bid. The contract couldn't be any more in any one year than $250,000, okay? So one of the things that we were looking at is the a right away permitting service. This requires a great deal of expertise um, and experience um, and relationships that have been established over a great number of years. So we, the executive board approved, executive approved uh, the issuance of a statement of work that went out last uh, Thursday morning, I think. Uh, we're expecting proposals back um, on Wednesday. That's tomorrow already, I guess. And for to bring to the, the executive board, executive committee on Thursday so that 
we're expecting that they'll be able to take some action on that date with regard to that uh, limited uh, contract, an important one, however. The last one is the Mission Broadband uh, Contract Award. I did send out, I did send out um, information about that uh, in a mailer and an email uh, before this um, before this meeting, and what I was what the whereas clauses refer to is uh, basically that uh, we have gone through a procurement process. Which in which we asked for consulting services on a number of and coordination services on a number of different things, and and we did have five teams that uh, did bid on that, and we selected the NRTC team, which included among them Mission Broadband, which is actually the firm that does the coordination has it has a great deal of experience in coordination and consulting, and uh, in the areas that are cited in the uh, whereas clauses. Um, and and we have reached an agreement with uh, Mission Broadband uh, in the um, uh, for, for contract, and so I'd like to make the motion is hereby move the governing board approve an agreement with Mission Broadband to perform consulting and coordination services, and that the executive committee be as authorized to manage the agreement and all services to be delivered under the agreement. This motion is similar to the motion that we made with regard to NRTC, and um, so if there's a second, we can have some more second. discussion. Second. Motion made by Ray, seconded by Tom. Um, and I guess uh, open for discussion, questions, comments. Not hearing any discussion. Do I have any objections to this motion? Hearing no objections, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you, folks. Next thing, Ray. Uh, that's it under under contracts, I think. Uh, David has a hand David's up. got his finger. Yeah, I forgot. We have we have um, full inventory contracts going on right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> how could we forget that? Anyway, um, Apex, one of our contractors, has just finished the towns of Plainfield, Roxbury, and Washington, and is moving on to Williamstown. And our other contractor, Tilson, is working in the town of Orange, I believe. Um, I think they may have slowed down because of weather at one point, but I think they're there now. So those are underway and um, going pretty smoothly, I think. Um, the other one is the high-level design contract, <laughs> which is with Vantage Point Solutions out of South Dakota, which was a joint effort with Washington Electric, CV Fiber, EC Fiber and NEK Broadband. And today they told me that they have finished the work and they're going to package it up and send it to us. And um, we'll have that to share with everybody. In the meantime, NRTC is sort of work is over, is sort of jumping over Vantage Point's work, but it'll be good to have some comparative um, assessment of costs and, and things like that. So yeah, and there's a lot, a lot of activity going on. Uh, David, give them the good news about the grants. Which uh, grants for the high-level design? Oh, we get money coming back. So <laughs> and then and then we'll be able to reuse it for our other work. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So that's the good news is that we had requested a whole bunch of money for the the high-level design. Turns out to be far less than what we had requested. So uh, there's money left over in those grants, and th and those were pre pre construction grants those were those were that was different money and we're going to be able to roll that over into other things now some of that money goes to it belongs to uh, ec fiber and nek because we were doing the WEC high level design in those in these three cuds right but uh, we still get a, it it's and it's a cons not an inconsiderable amount of money it's got to be at least 100 grand um, so that we'll be able to roll it over into other things um, to be determined, uh, we have to submit some work and we'll take that up at the executive committee, I think, on Thursday. It's good news. Yeah. Any other Sorry. grants or contracts news? Okay. Um, Town ARPA. Is that David or it's Ray? Jerry. It's Jerry. It's Jerry. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to take this on. <laughs> so. I honestly, I'm just going to say that my town 
of Orange, and I'm just going to open this up to the floor after I make my comment. My town of Orange is having a special ARPA funds meeting on March 21st that they announced at town meeting day and that I am going to be attending. Um, they want to give us the money, um, and and so I'm kind of hoping that we get the the checklist and procedure documents and stuff that we're being worked on. I hope I can have that in hand to show to somebody by the 21st. That would be awesome. Um, anybody else have ARPA town money discussion? Linda. Wait, did I get out of turn there? No, Chuck was first. I'm sorry, Chuck. Sorry, Linda. It's Chuck. No problem. Um, so I met I met with uh, our select board last evening. Um, I will have to say they continue to be pretty conservative about what they want to use town ARPA funds on, but they they remain receptive to the idea of it. Um, I, I do get very little uh, negative reaction to it. Um, I unfortunately was not prepared with checklists and, and draft MOU or anything like that for them uh, on this particular visit. But like Siobhan, uh, our, our select board is uh, spinning up a committee to drive the process of selection of options. Uh, it sounds like that committee is going to meet uh, for the first time next week. Um, I'm Probably not going to be directly involved on the committee since I'm obviously biased, but I will do my best to influence the committee uh, as much as I can, and and I'm thankful for having Sam's help. I will call out that uh, in the meeting, uh, Karen Horn from the Vermont League of Cities and Towns was there, uh, and they've been sort of historically towing a line that towns should remain very conservative uh, about uh, uh, allocating any funds from ARPA uh, and go very slow about the selection, and yet. Uh, she also turned around and said that uh, both personally and professionally, th she thinks uh, you know this match makes it a pretty, a very good opportunity to invest in broad uh, band expansion, and and so uh, she'll definitely have the ear of my uh, of my select board more so than I ever will, uh, and so hopefully that will help incentivize them. Uh, my my anticipation, what they've sort of communicated, uh, is that you know they're hoping they'll have a decision come late spring early summer, uh, whether that makes the deadline, whether they actually move that quickly remains to be seen, but uh, it, there is a definitely at least a possibility here. Okay, Linda. The Waterbury Select Board is also meeting on the 21st. I would love to have the paperwork ready to put it on their desk for that day. Um, they have two new elected uh, Select Board members, um, so I will be do redoing the presentation that I did last month. Um, so um, please help me out with as much of the paperwork as possible so that I can uh, lay the contract right in front of them. Thank you. And Alan. Do we have an update on when the paperwork might be available? So what I would say to you is that um, <clears throat> uh, there was an appendix to the MOU, which is 99% uh, done. Uh, and the appendix is a checklist of those items that the town would select from with regard to how they wanted to use their money, which included, for example, uh, connecting homes and also included connecting community facilities. And why is that on there? Um, why is that on there? Yeah, it, it, I'm, I'm, I, I, with my select board, the less you put in front of them, the better well, off you are. No, I, 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 yes. I, no, I, they, absolutely, I absolutely agree with you. I absolutely agree with you. Uh, the less dotted is line more. is what you want to have on the document. Yeah, less, less, is, <laughs> less is more. Uh, but um, uh, there's several points to be made. One is that any money they give and any matching funds will be spent in their town. And so they get to pick from among of, of, of some listed things. And if they have something else they want to choose from, they can do that. But if they want to be involved with connecting the drops to the homes in the community, uh, then they can make a contribution in that fashion. If they want to make sure that schools and, and senior centers and, and fire police, town hall, et cetera, et cetera, uh, are, are connected um, and have the state uh, match their funds, they can choose that if they want to give us a blank check or let's let's rephrase if they want to give us a hundred thousand dollars and they don't care how we spend it in their town uh that's good too 
I'm only saying this because my town doesn't have most of the things you listed as possible options to spend the money on. And I think that's probably not untrue for a number of other of our towns. So I'm I'm just I'm getting more and more nervous the longer this takes. I've now had a changeover in my select board where the previous chair who I work with to get this thing through has now left and a new guy has come in. I haven't I, I haven't talked with him yet. But I, I'm I'm just feeling nervous. And the sooner these documents could be ready, the happier I'm gonna be. Thanks. Uh, Jeremy Matt. Uh, no, I am not muted. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I just wanted to say that I'm kind of in a little bit of a different boat from you, Alan. My select board is like, okay, where's the value? And that, you know, like, what what do we get out of it? And being able to say, like, you know, here we, we will give, you know, you, you can choose, you know, to subsidize everyone's drops in the town or subsidize low income people's drops in the town. I mean, that, that's something that any town can benefit from, you know, and then the municipal offices. I'm not sure if that would really help Plainfield, to be honest, because, you know, they're they've already got cable at the at the town offices. So we're not going to be passing by them for a little while, most likely. Um, but being able to show this is the value would be useful. Right now, the update for Plainfield is that they're also forming a committee to figure out how to spend these ARPA funds. And an, an uninterested committee is how they put it, whatever that means. Um, but being able to provide them with, here's the MOU, here's the list of things that you can pick and choose from, um, would be very helpful. And the other thing is, I'm not sure if this was brought up, but the matching funds being first come, first serve, I think would also be a very good thing to put out there that, you know, we get a certain amount of matching funds. The matching funds themselves are first come, first serve, and we're going to be allocating the first come, first serve money that we get to towns on a first come, first serve basis. I believe that's what we've talked about at any rate. Yeah, the one another thing just just for your town, Jeremy, it's not just the town offices, but the Marsh Plain School. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's the, the library. It's it could be. It could be more significant for some some of your cornerstone, the health center, that kind of thing um, to, sure. that might be good to 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 get on board. Um, does anybody else have any comments about town ARPA money? And I don't see any. Oh, Henry, go ahead, Henry. Oh, Walker, you have your hand up too. Yeah, um, no, I just um on the same page with Jeremy, Matt, about, you know, this makes it seem real and not just, um, you know, a bunch of money that's going to go into a general fund. Um, so I just support it, what he said. Okay, thank you, Henry. And Walker. Um, yeah, uh, Katarina and I met with the select board in Washington on, in January, and and we we essentially let them know that there was going to be more discussion once we once they knew where where you know what they could spend on ARPA, and once we had a clearer list of options for them, um, I had heard that there was going to be matching funds possible. I let them know this, but you know. It, it it's really good if we can get a very clear document down um, along with poll inventories, honestly, you know, where we can actually get into the details um, and then give them the options so they know that it's real. Um, afraid, oh yeah, the, the one below that we had in, in, um, for me is the the issue of if they can use it for town road stuff or not for ro any road stuff and that i i keep seeing stuff where the decision has been made yes and then the decision was made no and then the decision was yes and the where that actually has fallen i think the most recent decision that ray sent out said that they could use it for road stuff which is going to be a stiff competition in Orange because our roads suck. Same in, uh, same in Washington. It's going to yeah. be just, yeah. Katharina, go ahead. 
Yes, I just wanted to add to what Walker said. We also had a um, instead of a town meeting day, we had a Zoom, and I was on there. And um, one of my neighbors asked how how townspeople can support, you know, our us getting ARPA funds. And um, it was pretty clear that it was not a high priority on the selectmen's agenda because there are other projects that have been on the back burner for a long time, which they deem more important. But I think if we can, it seems like people in town were behind it and would be willing to, you know, step in and support us if we tell them how. Maybe that and needs to be a front porch forum thing where we really just explain the situation. Maybe Linda could explain the petition that she had signed uh, that she did some work on. Linda, go ahead. Yep, that's why my hand is up, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, we printed up uh, 250 uh, brochures. Uh, I passed them out and talked with voters as they came in on uh, March 1st into the polling place. Um, and I got 140 signatures on a petition to the select board that people were interested in spending 5% of the ARPA funds on uh, uh, CV fiber broadband. Um, I have a uh, uh, hundred or so brochures left over, and I asked David to send me a list of uh, the unserved in Waterbury so that I could actually go door to door to those people who have the most to, to gain from the matching funds and uh, try to get them to either sign the petition or actually show up for the select board meeting. And I do plan on uh, advertising the select board meeting on front porch form. Uh, as soon as I get that, I'm on the agenda for sure. Like I said, we have two new select board members, and I got to do some convincing of them. So uh, move on forward with more brochures. I think it worked really well for me to publicize the fact that a lot of people are interested. The select board needs to know that. Thank you. Christopher. Yep, so to, to add on to that, and, and, and by the way, I have to tell everybody how lucky Waterbury is that we have Linda come going door to door. Um, I, I think that's, I think that's fantastic. So thank you, Linda. Um, uh, so in the brochure that, that, uh, that Linda and I put together, um, we actually included the Waterbury select board uh, member names and email addresses in the actual um, document. And, and in there we, we gave instructions to, email your select board members with this text, you know, please say this, you know? Um, and so, <clears throat> so that could be an answer that if, you know, even if you didn't have a flyer, even if you didn't have, you know, the, the time to go door to door or, or petition or anything, you know, if you're having people ask you, um, you know, what can I do? The simplest thing is email your select board members that you want this. And the more people you get to email those select board members, um, you know, the, the more they're going to start, you know, having visibility into the desire of the townspeople to, to have that. Um, and then one other little quick note that I'll make um, when, when we, when we made this flyer, we made it sort of generic enough that you can, we can very quickly um, edit the document for any other town. So if anybody is interested, I, I think there's a, a way we can, we can have that recreated for your specific town and then have them printed up. Okay. Thank you, Christopher. Tom. And after Tom, I'm going to call an end to this discussion because y'all are cutting in on my lead. <laughs> You're not allowed to do that, I believe, right? Um, <laughs> I can shut you all up if I want to. <laughs> Go ahead, um, Tom. I'll try to frame this not as, as a laziness, but uh, as an effort <laughs> for efficiency and increasing our, our reach here. Um, but I'm wondering, I mean, I, I love the idea of the petition and I'm trying to figure out how I would make that happen. Is there a way that we could do this digitally um, where we could, through a front porch forum post, have a link like, hey, if you're interested, here's like put your name, your town, and say, yes, I agree to this. And then we can send that. It doesn't even have to be super official. It just has to be something we can put in front of the select board and say, hey, look, we got 800 people in the town. That's a pretty big number who are interested in having you do something about this. And at least it would start moving the, the conversation along. And I understand is that that's something not a small you would like the communication, communication committee to consider? 
Humbly. <laughs> Chuck, <laughs> just take that into account then, please. All right, are there any more comments on the town ARPA money? All right, we're gonna move on to facts and that's Alan. Yeah, so I sent around to everybody about 20 minutes ago, half an hour ago through, through email, uh, a list of FAQs that the policy committee looked at the other week what it what the list is is a um, combination of FAQs or similar information that's presented on um, the website of I think it's five different uh, CUDs, uh, Vicuda, and there's a third one. Uh, there must be the broad no the uh, Department of Public Service. And what we were trying to do was to just see the range of kinds of issues questions that people are cover, covering in their FAQs, knowing we're soon going to have to be answering a lot of questions as well. Um, what we're trying to do now is to look at all the different questions and try to put them into categories for which we could make assignments to various committees or individuals to help us begin to develop an FAQ. This is obviously going to be a lot of um, collaborative work with the communications committee and with probably some of the other committees that have special knowledge about specific things. If anybody has specific knowledge about digging conduits, uh, that would be good for us to know. But one thing that we're finding is there's a heck of a lot of information out there already. If you look at if you look at what's on some websites, some of it is very detailed. Uh, EC Fiber is probably the best example of the most detailed website when it comes to having questions that people can search for and get answers to online. And that makes sense since they've been in business so long. And there are other websites that seem to wander all over and don't really have a compact presentation and don't cover things that I'm going to guess we will eventually be getting a lot of questions on. One of those areas, and that's a second topic we've been talking about in the policy committee, is digital equity. How do we make sure that even though everybody, we hope, will soon have access to high-speed internet, that they're going to be able to afford it? And I think one thing that we've been learning in the policy committee is we talk with people and this past week on Monday, a number of us listened to a talk by Holly Groschner to the uh, to to uh, uh, Bikuda. One of the things that we that that CUDs are very likely going to have to be able to explain to people is how subsidies work to make it better able for them to be able to pay the costs that whatever that's going to be uh, of their uh, internet connection. Uh, this this is an issue that I've started to begin to worry about more and more because it looks like the state itself doesn't want to get involved in essentially operating another social service that tries to figure out who should be eligible for a subsidy for helping to pay uh, connection costs or ongoing subscription fees. I think what's going to happen, uh, and Siobhan, maybe you want to say something about this later too because you were on the call. Um, I think what's going to happen is EC Fiber is going to use the foundation it's already set up to create a model by which a CUD could establish its own way of handling requests and helping people get subsidies to help pay the help pay their their um, their internet connection bills. The really interesting thing is going to come when we all have to figure out where the money to pay for the subsidies is going to come from. We all sort of think. Uh, or I think we want to think that there are a bunch of government programs out there that are going to take care of this for us. And I don't think that's quite the quite the truth. I think what's going to happen is each CUD uh, is going to have to figure out how to draw some money from its own revenue in order to help fund uh, subsidies for our customers. EC Fiber is already starting to do that through the foundation that, that Holly Groschner is working with, and I think eventually that model is going to apply to us. So I think 
there's going to be a lot of a lot of responsibility put on us for explaining to people why it might be that our fees that we charge for internet are a little bit higher because we're subsidizing um, internet connections for people who uh, are lower income. And in, in a sense, we're going to be coming kind of, we're going to be providing a social service. This is, you know, beyond poles and wires and conduits and, and devices to connect. It's, it's also a social service to try and bring equity uh, to the people we're serving. I think we're all in favor of this, but it's, I think it's going to be a lot of work. And I think in the end, it, it could, it could end up to be a substantial cost. So uh, that's the, that's the news in both FAQs and and off of FAQs, the whole idea of digital equity. I think it's going to be, I think it's an evolving issue that's going to get bigger and bigger. So um, let me look at this. Jeremy, Matt, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I'm very much for uh, digital equity. I mean, uh, and not being part of any of the other conversations, so I don't have much to say in it. It seems like doing it piecemeal through different CUDs isn't the best way to do it. And, you know, I, I, and I honestly, I think that we have our hands full enough with trying to make quorum and get an executive director on board. And that's probably going to continue for the next foreseeable number of years. And to, to add that on, it doesn't seem like we're a good fit for providing social services you know we're i don't know i mean i guess if not us then who maybe but so i just i want to yeah. clarify because i've been in a couple of meetings and i've seen a couple of demonstrations of the actual software the eab has had that they spent a lot of money to develop um the idea is that there's a central EAB is the equitable Equitable access for broadband, I think is what it's called. Yeah. Right. That's Holly Groshner's group. Yeah. Yeah, that's Holly Groshner's group. Um, they they've uh, with with the help of funding from EC Fiber, they have actually developed an application, and the idea of the application is that it's a, a data collection point. You get the, you get you qualify. You get they are they are talking about having social services case managers do this at the time they're intaking them for other things that this becomes another program they intake people for there are problems with that issue with that idea as well but it's a starting point so they have actually signed people up through this application they get their their qualifying information and their location and if ec fiber doesn't serve them they tell that person to contact who can serve them with this uh, this uh, cursory approval of the initial the initial approval that they do qualify for these federal subsidies or these federal grants that are coming through. So it, in a way, it's kind of like some of the the subsidy programs that are provided by for for fuel oil or or he, home heating kinds of things for for low income folks. And I think the idea, my impression of what I think Holly is going for is for this to be a solution that the other CUDs buy into. So we've got a group of people who are doing the intakes on this, who may be the social workers or maybe staff members from EAB themselves doing intakes or that we've got, we're sending people to talk to them instead to, to do the pre-qualification and then when the time comes that they they're qualified they get referred back to us if they're within our district and then we get them hooked up and we probably have to deal with getting the subsidy paperwork processed or however that ends up being whatever that final form is um, but i think the end goal is to make it a statewide thing at least for the CUDs, possibly through Vicuda or Vermont Community Broadband. But as as Alan has said, you know, he he's he's commented before that you know the the state doesn't have a good record on any of this, so we we don't know where this is all going. But we are trying. I am trying 
to push this out so that it is not on us to be making these decisions because I don't we don't have the staff we don't have the qualifications to make these decisions and there's a lot of fun points to these sorts of qualifying programs that you really need people who know how they work to figure out who's going to qualify and does anybody else other than Jeremy have any comments before I recognize Jeremy again I don't see any go ahead Jeremy I feel like I'm back in class with my professors telling me to stop <laughs> asking questions. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it's totally fine. I'm totally. That's totally what I intended too. <laughs> I, I I totally respect that and have no problem being told to, to take a break. Anyway, um, what I was going to say was that the idea, like the way you laid it out, yeah, that that sounds fine. You know that we allocate resources to you know filling out the paperwork and stuff like that, but you know managing case files and eligibility requirements and figuring out because you know we're we're not social workers and you know i think it's yeah exactly so. that's that's not that's not it anybody else oh oh i did want to make another comment since nobody else is talking about it is just the broader topic of FAQs. Um, I had explicit questions about conduit and running fiber up people's drive waves to their houses and and what's our policy going to be on that and how much is it going to cost and so I do have some anxious people who really want high speed internet. They're very in favor of it, but the sooner we can come up with thoughts on that the the better we are and walker go ahead oh wait yeah walker um i've been telling people that a lot of our you know the funding that that's going into this build out aside from stringing onto um poles you know we're charging a fraction of what it's costing to hook somebody up from the pole to the house um it's important for people to know that that their 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 setup is going to be somewhat subsidized. It's not going to be cheap, but it's not inexpensive to run conduit to someone's house if it's not available. Yeah. And Linda, I think this uh, conduit uh, discussion came up at the the Holly. Um, EAB discussion, didn't it, uh, Alan? Yes. Yeah. And so they had a policy already in place. We should uh, get it up on the website, perhaps? Well, I think we want to look at it first, but if anybody wants to see what I, I think is a really good and time-tested conduit policy, if you want to call it that, go to the EC Fiber website, and that web address is on the information that I sent around, the FAQs uh, attachment that I sent to everybody. Um, you, you can actually look at the list of, of FAQs that is posted on the EC Fiber website about conduits uh, on that document, and then go to it and you can prowl around yourself to see what's there. I mean, these folks have been dealing with this now for, what, 10 years at least. So I think we can assume that the guidelines they're using for conduits is probably, those guidelines are probably pretty solid and we can, I hope, adopt those without having to to do to do a lot of a lot of changes to them but yeah i i'm starting to get questions about this too and and i just i just want us to be ready that's what i'm worried about but let's put it on the policy agenda well we've had it on the policy agenda the the faqs we no we just i mean have to, the conduit policy well i don't think we want to post anything that we haven't looked at and I don't think the policy committee is the right committee to look at conduit policy because I, I we don't uh, know anything about construction and that's really what you're talking about like how far down to dig and what kind of materials to use and how you charge and I mean it's it's go to the website go to the EC Fiber website Linda and and look at what's up there and you'll you'll see it, it gets pretty complex very quickly okay okay Jonathan can folks hear me? I'm on another computer. Yep. I hear you. Uh, if I may uh, return to the, the the digital equity question, um, you know, I'm strongly a proponent of uh, us not passing the buck 
uh, in terms of you know the burden of having to complete paperwork and application forms i'd really like to not pass that on to the consumers and i will say that you know as an employee of the food bank we have quite a bit of experience in you know mitigating the requirements of federal and state dollars when it comes to having to track people declaring income and that sort of thing because we serve so many low to moderate income persons um, i'm sure there are uh, ways that we can work around having to, um, you know. Oh, we lost you, Jonathan. Oh, no. Can you, am I still uh, going? No, I, can, I can still hear Jonathan. Yeah, you're good. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Um, sorry. Uh, and, and I think there are ways we can manage our finances such that, say, we use the federal dollars that have more stringent requirements around um, income identification for one purpose and then fund our unrestricted general operating dollars or, or the monies generated from subscriber revenues um, for, for that sort of uh, assistance to persons who can't afford our services on, on their low, lower or no incomes. And I, I also believe that, you know, we can have it such that we don't we don't have to function as a social service agency. We can simply ask people to self-identify that they are of low to moderate income, and that should be sufficient, in my opinion. Um, I think there's some amount of uh, trust that we have to uh, adopt in order to truly be an equitable uh, organization and, and and offer an equitable service here. Um, I think so. I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Okay, Ray, I'm recognizing you. I think Jeremy had his hand up before I did, if you'd like yeah, to. Yeah, but he's already spoken on I've this. I've already spoken. Okay, a couple things. One is that um, with regard to the technical requirements like conduit, you know, obviously this is not a policy committee discussion. It's a, really a um, discussion with our engineers. And and so that that's the, you won't be drafting those requirements. Somebody Thank else you. will be doing that. Secondly, with regard to the um, uh, uh, people qualifying, for example, for subsidization, et cetera, et cetera. No, we're not going to set up a, a, an infrastructure to do that. Um, yes, there'll be something that will be done uh, statewide. I expect it to be equal access to broadband. I expect them to get some ARPA funding to help us uh, set that up. I expect they will be the people who will be doing the qualifications for uh, people to get subsidization. And um, we just need to, if we, if we are aware of people uh, that need that, we just need to make them aware of that so that they can uh, follow up on it. Uh, and that's, it requires um, personal touch um, that um, I'm obviously not the right person for that personal touch and neither is an installer or the right person for that personal touch, uh, but it'll get worked out um, with uh, equal access to broadband. So I, I, we should be interested, concerned, and and um, supportive, and um, uh, but I think that we're going to have something uh, set up statewide that we can join. Jeremy. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to disagree a little bit with Jonathan on not passing costs along. I mean, if if we have costs, we have to pass them along. I mean, we are. Our balance sheet is kind of a zero sum game. If we have increased costs, we need to get that back in terms of higher revenue. So, um, or higher, higher fees. Um, I agree we can minimize that, but you know, if it's costing us money or labor, that's going to raise our rates. Okay. Any other comments on facts? All right, website update. Oh, Jonathan, go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to respond. I'm not suggesting, uh, Jeremy, that we not charge people an appropriate amount of monies, but I think that, you know, we are a municipal organization and we do have uh, uh, we do have to provide a service to the greater public good, and so I think we can oh, yeah. do that through yeah. an equity lens. I, I completely I think we're both in agreement here. Um, I think we just need okay. to do it in a fair way. That's all. I think okay. I was mishearing what you were saying. Maybe thanks. Okay, blah, 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 blah. website update, Chuck. 
Is that yeah. Chuck? I'm going to defer to Linda uh, to give us just a quick overview of some of the. We don't the want to hear from Chuck. Talk, Linda, talk. <laughs> <laughs> we changed a lot of uh, pages around. We uh, put a lot of documents up. Uh, um, Alan gave me policy type documents to, that I put up. Um, there's a, a, a new navigation bar. Uh, we uh, understand that we need a new calendar, uh, that the Google calendar that we have up at the moment is not working for us. Um, uh, I looked into it and Chuck has been looking into it and it's very complicated to try to put the Microsoft calendar up, but we're, we're still working on it. We'll, we'll come up with something. Um, what did I miss? Oh, we do have a FAQ page up there. So if anyone that comes up with uh, some uh, definitions for FAQs from Alan's list, I'd be glad to post onto the FAQ list. I do have one question. Is this is is this website structure um, screen reader friendly? Screen. For accessibility? So uh, the, the, the short answer to that question is we don't have a screen reader, but we have a screen reader emulator. I run it through every once in a while. Okay. Um, and so it's it's not perfect, but we're not going to get sued by the ADA over it. Well. And, and by the way, I have gotten sued by the ADA before, so I know that pain. <laughs> okay. All right. Any, anybody else? Uh, Jeremy, Matt, you get a question or a comment. Uh, yeah, no, I, a comment. I just wanted to point out that when I've been posting minutes and agendas, I've been very careful to put in the text description of the documents uh, to make that more reader accessible uh, to people. So, thank you. If anyone, anyone needs, if anyone okay. needs any help posting agendas or meeting minutes, please let me know. I just wanted to add that uh, uh, thank you to to Linda and to uh, Christopher for all the work they're doing on the website. They've made a lot of uh, changes, a lot of improvements, navigation, um, a lot of uh, public documents and things are up there. The, there's an ArcGIS map up there, um, and it's constantly being changed. If you have suggestions, uh, send them uh, to Chuck, Linda, and Christopher, and uh, you'll probably see them real soon now. They're doing a great job. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Ray. Any, any other comments? We are to construction planning. Is that Ray or is that David? David. David. So we are continuing to meet with NRDC, and I'm going to say the wrong name now too, <laughs> NRTC, in the development of the executable project plan. In the course of doing that, um, they have completed a basically it, there's a pretty detailed high level design of the network and I'm going to share the screen and give everybody a, a preview of where they are. Let's see if I can find sharing. Just to uh, double check, David, this is nothing that should be potentially thought of as confidential. Oh God, I don't know. I mean, anyway, all right. I won't. I, I don't know. I just uh, I will it, not show the map, but I'll describe it. it. David, Basically, they've they've identified nine locations for I, cabinets, which would be the light that connects the the uh, the backbone. It's a 131 mile backbone that goes through our whole network, through our whole all our communities. Not all, actually, does it go through every community? No, it doesn't go through every community, but close. And it's um, about 985 miles of overhead and you know but i forget how many underground but there's a bit of bit of underground and there are 23 distribution areas being serviced off of those nine cabinets so the average area is about 43 miles of each uh, distribution area and we're working through prioritization and efficiencies and should be back with everybody in very short order because it needs to be part of the um, having them move forward with the detailed design. Um, I'll answer, be happy to answer any questions. Go ahead, Ray. No, no, David did a great job. 
Oh, well, you still have your hand up. I thought you had a comment. Oh, no. Do I? Apologies. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Anybody else have any comments? Are you all starting to drag a little bit? Okay, everybody get up and dance. <laughs> Here we up and jump. Okay, no, I can't do that. I may be all powerful as the as the chair, but can't make you dance. All right, so that is construction planning and WEC partnership is next. Is that also David or is that? I guess I could tell you, Jerry should be the person doing it. But anyway, um, okay. and I don't think this needs to be an executive session. Do you, Ray? Um, they haven't, uh, WEC hasn't announced anything. So it, it, either it, is, it, it, either it is or we table it till the next meeting. Let's table it to the next meeting. We'll table it to the next regular meeting. Yep. And we're right on time. The board, and we are right on time. So I'm going to do a round table. I'm going to call you, call you, talk. Jonathan, are you here as Barry City? I am here as Barry City. That is correct. Oh, good. So do you have any comments for the round table? Uh, no, I, I this has been a very productive meeting. Thank you all. And, um, you know, I sorry to put on my my food bank hat for the evening, but uh, it's OK. We like it. <laughs> we like it's good. It's good. All right. Alan Gilbert. Well, as former Mayor Rutland, former Mayor of Rutland, Gilly Godnick once said, finally, our reality is becoming a dream. Um, that's somehow. <laughs> I think if you reverse it, it's 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 what it's what I'm really beginning to feel. We're we're uh, we're really we're really beginning to see that something's going to happen, and that really feels good. And by the way, that comment was made by Gilly Godnick in the 1970s when he got a lot of government money to build a parking garage in downtown Rutland, which was <laughs> torn down about 15 years later. Oh. So the <laughs> the dream which was realized then then, then was obliterated. Okay. Alan. <laughs> it's just some history. Be positive. So for the round table, are alternates also round tabled? Do okay, yeah. Christopher. <laughs> I think I've said enough. Seconded. Chuck Burt. No, just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> if you want to say something, wow. say something. Wow. <laughs> no, actually, you've heard me enough. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> okay. David Healy, do you have any comments? Uh, I, I, I'm done for the night. Thank you. Okay. Um, David Lawrence, I do not recognize this name. David, I'll recognize you for roundtable if you want to talk. Uh, is it David Lawrence or David Went? Well, um, this the oh, list I'm David looking Lawrence. at says David, David Lawrence. Lawrence. Is from Middlesex. Okay. So so. I'm not a lunatic. David Lawrence, you're muted if you're trying to comment. But if you don't want to comment, just don't say anything and I'll move on. <laughs> All right, David went. Uh, yeah, nothing to add. Thanks, everyone. OK, Henry, I'm a study. I'm a study. I'm a st you. I'm a study. Um, I'm a study. Um, yeah, no, I think it's great. Everything is moving along and you guys are a powerhouse team uh, making this all happen. Um, I offer any uh, technical support if you want me to attend NRTC meetings or review documents. Um, I'm willing to do that. Thank you, Henry. Jeremy Hansen. I just want to um, give you a round of applause, Siobhan. Uh, bravo for running the meeting. Everything went smoothly on time and everything worked well. And thanks to everybody else for their continuing good work as we uh, start getting towards our first lit subscriber. Thank you. Jeremy, Matt. No, you already told me to zip it, so I'm, I'm all set. <laughs> right. John Walters. You don't uh, have to talk. Nope. Okay, there you go. Go ahead. Nope, nothing, uh, nothing to add. I'm just the observer. Oh, okay. Katharina. Nothing to add. Okay, Linda me. Gravel. I cannot do my job as delegate with all the, without all the help from every single person on the governing board. Thank you so much. And Ray. 
Yeah, I was just envisioning a, a person who was our, our first lit subscriber with a T-shirt that says first lit subscriber. <laughs> yeah. I am Getting all in lit. favor of that. Tom I Fisher. <laughs> <laughs> Tom I, Fisher. I was going to echo the sentiments of this is a very well run meeting, Siobhan. Congratulations. Aww, and it is most you. appropriate that on International Women's Day we you should lead us <laughs> through this meeting. <laughs> Jerry who, right? Jerry who. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and Walker. Thank you all. Nothing to add. It's a great meeting. Okay, well, I'm going to tie this up with, uh, I can't remember what I was going to say. It was going to be really witty, so everybody laugh uproariously. It'll be fantastic. Um, we so all like, I don't... We, go ahead. we all like shag rugs. Yes, this, yes, my 1970s decor here. This is, this is awesome. Um, so do I need a motion to adjourn, or can we just adjourn? You can declare it adjourned. You can hear I'm it declaring us adjourned at... <laughs> Uh, 7.39 p.m. Thank you, everybody. Don't Stop, the the recording. Stop the recording. Night, everyone. Stop the recording. <laughs> Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. I'm so glad we had this time together. <laughs> 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 <laughs>